Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, we're going back to another Canmore to have a look further through their range. Now, this will be the third Canmore I've covered, and there's two more still to come, so I'll be covering them over the next few months. But here today, we have the 10 year old Glen Rothis from their Canmore range. You know, this range, if you haven't caught my other videos, is an independently bottled range by Charles Edge London. And they've got this Canmore brand, which is uh, about a king in Scotland. And um, really, they're all just about getting really interesting whiskies. Now, so far, we've done a, a Boonhaven 12-year-old and we've done an Ardmore 10-year-old. And they've both been pretty good. So as you can see, I've had a good old a good old wedge through this. And I should say at the top of the show as well, thanks to them for sending these bottles over for me to review. Uh, always like to be open and honest about such things on the channel at No Nonsense Whiskey. Let's get into this one then and see what we've actually got in the bottle. Now, you'll notice here, I mean, this, this is all single cask stuff. Uh, this runs about £62, although I did see Master of Malt had it for £59 today. Um, it's a full-size bottle and, you know, you can see here, naturally coloured non-chill filter. And you see it's, it's relatively pale, but that's what I... That's what I love about independently bottled whiskies, because it's a, uh, a a truer reflection of a distillery character. Let's say, you know, I I don't know anything about the barrels on this one. I imagine because of the uh, kind of lack of colour, let's say, that it's probably uh, an ex-bourbon barrel and it's probably refill. So, uh, if, if you don't know your terminology, you have a fresh barrel with bourbon in it and then you have a first fill and then you have refill after that and that can be refilled as many times as you like so we don't we don't know when you see the word refill you don't know if it's actually a first refill or a second or whatever you know sometimes you'll get first fill second fill third fill whatever but usually you get first fill and then refill i don't know anything about this one particularly but i'm just taking an educated guess that this is probably a refill barrel just purely based on the color but you know it might not be that said, let's get into it and see what we've actually got. You know, there's not much to actually say about these independently bottled whiskies because um, they don't they don't come with heaps of like story. They don't come with like loads of marketing gumph. They're usually just single cast whiskies presented in a natural way. So let's get onto the nose then. Um, well, like I say, we can talk about color. You know, like I said, it's quite it's quite pale. It's relatively straw, but I like that sort of thing here. I'm not too bothered about I'm not too bothered about added color either, to be honest. But I'm not too bothered about color generally speaking. So let's get onto the nose and see what we've got. Now for me, it's got quite a, uh, a nice light floral herbal nose, but there's heaps of vanilla to this, some lemongrass as well. Uh, and like I said, those herbal floral notes are quite interesting as well. Let's try on the palette. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one does some really interesting things. It's, it builds quite a lot. It starts out quite light and smooth, sweet vanillas, some orchard fruits, kind of typical things that I expect from a Speyside whiskey, to be fair. Um, you know, regions don't matter that much anymore, but there's definitely some kind of regional stuff going on, you know, to, to kind of get those flavour profiles going through. And I'm getting that in heaps of this. It ends in that kind of like herbal floral note that I was getting from the nose, which is really interesting. And there's definitely some spice on the back end as well. So it actually builds into kind of light, into a little bit more fruitiness, and then some herbalness, and then some spiciness, which is really interesting. I kind of like that as a whole package. About medium, medium-ish on the uh, on the kind of finish, spicy back end as well. Once the fruit has disappeared. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. I have not actually covered a Glen Ruffus on the channel properly. I don't think. Um, it's not a distillery that I get on with actually. Um, I've, I've only tried a couple of them, I've not tried all of them for sure, but they're kind of early, cheaper standard releases. I've had a few in my time before I started the channel and didn't really get on with it. It was kind of boring, in, in, you know, to be honest. So when I saw Glen Rothers here, I thought, well, obviously I'll give it a go but um, and give it my kind of full, honest review. But this is like the first Glen Rothers I've ever tried that I thought, that's actually really lovely. And it, it's quite expensive at sixty-two pounds brand, uh, you know, from there. But that, if you actually look on Master of Malt, it's a bit cheaper, fifty-nine quid, as I said before. And as always, there's a link in the description below, which is a, an affiliate link, which gives me a, a small kickback for kind of sending you over there. But it's you know, if you want a bottle, please do check it out. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, the the cool thing about this is it's single cask, forty-six percent sure, non-chill filtered, natural coloured, and it fits in well actually. If you look at the rest of the stuff that's available. It fits in quite well with the single cask, independently bottled Glen Rothus 
uh, price ranges. So I'm comfortable with that. That's a pretty good price, I think, in my opinion. And to try a Glenrothes in its kind of natural presentation, um, I don't know how Glenrothes make their whiskey or how they mature their whiskey, but to try it like this, I find really interesting. And that's what I really love about independently bottled whiskies. But there you go, yeah, that's my thoughts to it. Um, if you're interested in it, like I said, go and check it out. Uh, go and check out the rest of the Canmore range, of course, as well. Uh, I've been impressed with it so far, and I've got a couple more to go, which I've been impressed with as well, spoiler alert. But um, yeah, pretty good range if you ask me. But yeah, there you go. That's my review of Canmore, uh, Glenrothes 10-year-old. I'll see you again on more No Not Whiskey videos in the future. Cheers.